the party with Serene and Pearl. Get it right, P O D D Y. Young and old, thick and thin. It's the Trim Healthy Podcast, and we're glad you're up in here. Hey, um, can I can ask I just go back before, before you start? can't move beyond thick and thin? I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm just offended already. Uh, no, no. These days, you want to be thick. Thick is it's delightful. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, thick is a compliment. We were yeah. in a in a meeting the other day, and this one guy said, "If my uh, if if we ever take trim healthy to the both genders, you know what I mean? Not just the men by default. You know, it's like if my wife called me trim more than once, I'd get a, a complex. I want to be called stout. Oh yeah, guys don't want trim. But healthy. but but hey, I mean, can healthy. we before we go? Because those who, go on those who watch me on YouTube, I mean. And there needs to be an explanation for <laughs> yeah. this today. Pearl said she stretched like a champion. She said she woke up feeling so healthy, she decided to stretch like a champion. Well, she stretched out of her natural bone shape and she heard pops that shouldn't have popped. No, it was one pop in my neck. I just stretched because I felt so good in life. I got up at 5.30, like ready for the day. Tackle, stretch like I've never stretched in, the, in my life. Like you've never stretched like no human. Ping. Stretch. Ping, something snapped, pulled, popped. I don't know what it is. You, you felt a, a thing. Oh, a I moment. felt it. And and since then, I cannot move my neck. I've got a doctor's appointment tomorrow. Yeah, so I, I won't be my usual self today. And that's why I'm sitting in Danny's seat. Yeah. So if you hear an occasional a weird seat. scream, just know it's Pearl the... the um, I feel like we also have to address the peculiar, elephant. Peculiar, Pearl the peculiar. Yeah. What elephant? Honey, honey. The elephant in the room. Serene's torso is longer than mine. Hey, I'm not even sitting up straight. Are you sitting up straight? You're not taller. She's not taller. You're not 5'11 and three quarters. That's what, what Serene you? is. You're not 5'11 yes, and, and, and three quarters. Not without shoes. No, not she without is. shoes I am. With these shoes, I'm six and a bit. But yep. I'm taller than you. Do you know my breezy you know, is Dan, already... You don't look taller than her either. It's just, just a dose of reality. Do you know my breezy is almost 6'1"? She's I know. taller than me now. Yeah, I know My little 13-year-old. Yeah. I'm shorty. I'm 5'10". <laughs> Yeah, Danny, you're, you're taller perfect. than me. Dan, when you're perfect. Dan, we <laughs> measured. You you forget. You're mixing the sisters up. You're taller than me, and I'm 5'9". We so measure. I'm, she, I'm he sure. wants to change who he's sitting next to. He wants to sit next to you. Pearl's, Pearl's height's in her legs, so you'll be just yeah. nice next to Pearl. My height's in my ankles. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, hey, I want to take over, um, like, and just, you know, I'm going to bell it for Leslie and just say bell, and we're going to start. I'm sure Leslie's already belled five times when we just didn't hear. I hate this seat. But I've got to talk for you guys. Okay, so it, praise the Lord it happened on Pearl's hurt neck day because I'm really going to take over a little bit because mm. I was in a moment last night and uh, ah, sorry, oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, girl. it hurts. Oh no, I pinged. Just keep oh. going. Okay, I was in a moment last night thinking about my life and thinking that hey, I'm 46. I'm kind of like, you know, hitting near half time. You know, it wasn't a depressing thought, but in the shower, I gave myself this little pep talk, and I thought to myself, hey, I wonder. You know, a good deal of our potty listeners are entering into half time or. Are already in their their last half of well, their you, game. Do you, do you mean? Oh, sorry, ha, last half of their trim healthy game or last no. half of their life? No, she life. means they're going to oh, die. Life. Forty six, mate. People might. Some people might call me middle aged. Yeah, I never thought about that before. Yeah. Well, so, if you're going to live to ninety eight, I'm living to one hundred twenty, so I'm not really there okay. yet. But anyway, just for the case of small normal. Yeah. Do you want to though? Expectations. Would you want to live to one hundred twenty? Yes, but hey, I've got it. Yeah totes i no. would but that's another whole spiel and i'd take hours explaining i mean why. in any condition but see just this, like, listen to my not talk. okay you ready you ready so i was thinking to myself i want to give our listeners a halftime talk like i just gave myself in the shower oh, good mm. i need Come to on. listen and this is gonna be a little bit longer than my shower one because i went into a little study and research mm. but um i'm gonna rant and i've got it on my telly I got on my teleprompter because I felt like every passionate word needed to be said and I didn't want to miss it. And will it help the likes of me who are feeling a little down today? Yes, it'll help the likes of you and it's sure going to help Dan. And um, and because you're heading, you're not that far behind me, Dan. I'm way back. How old are you, Dan, Dan? He's in his 42. It's, 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 oh, it's he over doesn't care to it's share o- his it's age. Over 30. I'm so like confident. Why wouldn't you want to share age? your age? I um, love you'll be saying shouting 52. your age after I talk here we're, today. We're actually, we're actually not allowed to share our age. Who's we? 
We actors. Oh, you know, you, you actors. Okay, well, I'm you, just, you, I'm yeah. just ignoring that whole thing. You have the I'm Hollywood Guild. I've signed a contract. Oh, okay. Yeah, because. Yeah, but you didn't sign that with us. See that way. Yeah, I'm over 30. Okay. Actually, they tell us to say over 18. So I'm going to yeah. do a bit of reading. That okay? Go. And can okay. he's, can you take the bottle off of me? Keeps hitting it. Yeah. I hate this seat. <laughs> okay. I hate it because, then, no, the camera, while you're going to do all this talking, the camera's on us. It's not on you. It's on us. And I'm normally over here like. That's true. Just not saying anything. And so now I'm just going to be like. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That's you can't do as normal surf the internet. so funny. Yeah. I can't like look up my facts. You can look really impressed about what I'm going to be saying. I'm always engaged in what she's You're very saying. engaged. And I'm normally over there just like getting the easy ride. He's normally over there eating all of Leslie Pops's wonderful leftovers from her yeah. awesome English deli. I get to that eat had, right? and just have no You're responsibility. Right. Okay. Hush. I'm starting. This potty is called, I don't know what John's going to call it, but I'm calling it now Halfway Time. Okay. You have a better name, okay? What about Halfway Locker Room t- oh, well, Cheerleading that Time? Sure. <laughs> this is so all I'm games, be fascinated. All games have a half time. Yeah. yeah. Any awesome spine-tingling game, one to watch on replay, or one that goes down in history as a great or goes viral, usually have one thing in common. A Half Time Pivotal Crossroad Question. A moment where they take a breath to gather their wits. They either play really hard. Really, sorry. sorry. They either play really well from oh, here on well, out. yeah. <laughs> I got distracted from your interesting <laughs> facials. They either play really well from here on out and celebrate awesome victory or they face plant. A great game often is not an easy one. A great game has opposition. Challenge. Odds not in their favor. Maybe a handicap. A great game often has an awful or just plain non-magnificent first half. The part everyone cares about in a great game, the part that makes it great, is the last half. It is the epic comeback. Now, a great game from the beginning is great and all, and we won't complain about that. It's what we want for our children for sure. But we are here to encourage and to state the facts that everybody loves an epic turnaround. I'm fully engaged. Danny, you don't even have to look engaged, right? Because you're engaged. A memorable story that gets retold and gets movies picking it up is always a story that has a struggling season where the chips turn against them. Let me read the second paragraph. Shut up. Can I read that? (laughs) No. I will crush this. I do voiceovers. I'm a professional. But listen about it. Listen about it. This is like not even written in proper English. Half of it's got no grammar. (laughs) That's what will make it so fun. Just let him read one paragraph because whatever it is, it's really good. And then he can be done and you can get back to it. You're afraid I'm going to do it better. No, I'm just afraid that there's no grammar in that. Listen, girls. (laughs) If you are in that halfway point in your game of life, if you've been feeling like a bit of failure because the first half of your game sucked or that you are in the middle of a game slump. We're here to talk to you today in your locker room and shoot straight with ya. You might be feeling like some of your friends have it all together and just clean sailed through the first half. They are rocking their midway point and look like they will go strong all the way to the last kickoff. Well, good for them. And a round of applause. But don't go thinking that your lack of luster or even shocking start or now midpoint slump has got your game all figured out as a total loss with a capital L. No, you get to have one of those glory stories that make the world stand in the stadiums and go nuts with cheering oblivion. You get to make one of those turnarounds that makes your game the one that inspires the future generations and gets talked about in the annals of history. You get to come from behind, the one that maybe no one had their eyes on or bet hedges on. You Get to slip in around the corner on the last lap or shoot a goal or bat a fastball when time is of the essence and win. Take the gold, even the record. You might even up the ante and set new inspiring possibilities for those coming up behind you. Well Whoa. done. I, I have to say, I feel, I feel like I'm done. sitting here with the crooked neck, but I'm such a proud sister right now of two people. First of all, I'm really, I can't wait. <laughs> oh, you heard again. Oh my goodness. Oh my I can't wait to hear more. I really need to hear more. But that was some uh, one of the most greatest pieces of writing. And Denny, 
That was so <laughs> moving. The well, way you did that, Danny, you really are a professional. Now that you're the actor, you can act see this halftime locker room coach, right? Mm. You really, really. No, that was well read. But now I want to hear more and soon, Serene, since you wrote it, read it. If this is you all tapped out at halftime, let's go into the locker room and have a wee passionate chat. We're not going to kick you when you're down, but we might kick you in the pants where you need it. <laughs> For starters, forget about the first part. Who cares if you sucked? failed, messed up, made an embarrassment of yourself, went out there on the field of life and face planted in the mud. Who cares? Don't care. It doesn't matter. The only game that matters is the one ahead of you, your final game. And you, my friend, are going to finish well and finish strong and finish with grit and be one that knows the future is for the taking. When your mind wants to go back to that place of failure, you grab it by the scruff of the neck and you place it back to the present where your game matters. You remember you only look back to thank. The world is at your feet and the possibilities are endless. 60 is the new 40 and even God it gave us the possibility of a 120. We have time yet to turn the tide and change our story. The last half is the half that counts. Know that if you are halfway in your game, it's the perfect time to give yourself a halftime locker room talk. But you might want to listen to our locker room talk to you as well. The more, the merrier. Let's give you some halftime, I hope, even seven years, sorry, every seven years, you are an entirely new collection of cells inside and out. If you change the environment of the cells emotionally, spiritually, physically, and nutritional, nutritionally from degrading to nurturing, nurturing, you will have created a healthier you. Pearl, and what's that called? Is it epigenetics? Yeah, well, epigenetics is yes. Yes. Where, where, where actually your genes do not decide, but what you do to your genes That's decide. Right. Because things turn off and things things turn on, and you do the turning yep. by what you put into your body. I knew it. She would and ch- thoughts. Thoughts see? also Change turn things is on, science. Turn things off. Change is biblical. It's the foundation of biblical belief to be renewed. Okay, we're going to talk about some things you need to know are in your favor as you go into your last half. Some things are better now that we are in half time. Let's take note. The mind, right? Isn't that a shocker? The yeah, mind. because I'm shocked. Contrary to its reputation, the middle-aged brain is actually better than its younger version. It not only maintains many of the bil- abilities of youth, but actually acquires some new ones. The adult brain is capable of rewiring itself well into middle age and using it in its rewiring decades of wisdom and experience. Research suggests the middle-aged mind is calmer, less neurotic, and better able to sort through social situations. Some have also improved cognitive abilities. And as you age, Dr. Patricia Ruder Lawrence, a cognitive neuroscientist, says, there's an enduring potential for plasticity, reorganization, and preservation of capacities. Of course, I want to, but in her quote, I don't know what that's <laughs> to nurture all of this no, potential. I'm like, of course, I want to interrupt that quote and say to nurture all this potential, we need to prevent disease of the brain through nutrition and healthy lifestyle. Because that doctor was discovering the brain. The, the, she was a neuroscientist saying there's plasticity well into the elderly yeah. years. We can reorganize all of this wonderful stuff. But I'm saying you got to keep healthy too, because you can actually, disease can disrupt. That's Do you coming. Go, okay, That's great. Good, but you, I'm actually opening it up for you and your expertise. Later. Oh, yeah. Okay, bring it to me later. I'm just, I'm just going through some of the stuff. Poor Jenny. I'm a little bit concerned. Listen, Jenny. there's a bunch of studies now turning up with incredible and thorough data on the aging brain. One source of this is the Seattle Longitudinal Study, which has tracked the cognitive abilities of thousands of adults over the past years. The awesome news for this halftime locker room is that the results show that middle-aged adults perform better for four out of six cognitive tests than those same individuals did as young adults. Really? Now, memorization. Now, this is where, Pearl, you'll be like, but, but, in your mm-hmm. hand up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer it. Because she's always like, I feel a little bit slower. Now, memorization skills and perceptual speed start to decline. Actually, when you're young adult, they start mm-hmm. to decline in your young adult in your young adult years. And that's yeah. why it's easier to learn languages under 10. Okay. But the halftime, I, the halftime hope that I have to share is that verbal abilities, abstract reasoning, simple math abilities, and spatial reasoning all improve in middle age or in other words, at the halftime. Yeah, I can see that. I, I find myself more intelligent in many ways. The thing that I noticed was from when I let my hormones decline, the brain fog, the word recall. Right. But I'm getting it back. You are. You're getting it back. A study published in Neurology in 2007, researchers tested pilots age 40 to 69 as they performed on flight simulators. 
Older pilots took longer to learn the simulating machines, yeah. of course, right? But they did a better job than their younger colleagues at achieving their objective, which is uh, avoiding collisions. They were actually ah. better. So they took longer to learn, but yes. they actually were more skilled. Research has shown that most adults perform better on mental tasks than they did as young adults. Researchers used to think that the brain would slow down with aging and would show less overall activity than younger ones, but neuroimaging studies have overturned this thought. Several studies have shown that older adults tend to use both brain hemispheres. This is so interesting to me. For tasks that only activate one hemisphere for younger adults. And you think, well, maybe that's better. They could do yeah. it with one hand. No, but Ruda Lorenz says that older adults use both hemispheres, that <coughs> older adults that use both hemispheres, um, it's a function called bilateralization and it makes for better performing adults. And the ones that only use one hemisphere do not perform as well. Interesting. So many adults think they think slower, but this does not mean that they think not as well. Oh. Quite the opposite. Speed changes, but mental ability and reasoning gets better. I love it. <laughs> the white matter in the brain, which forms the connections among nerve cells, <laughs> keeps increasing well into middle age. Dr. Grady, a neuroscientist, says that this suggests that there are some developmental changes that really don't hit their peak until somewhere in the middle age. We're not even at our peak, and you're just a little young lad. Like, just you don't tiny, qualify. Just tiny, brain like, diapers. Just a baby. Brain diapers. And I'm going to open it up Good. here. I'm going to open it up here, but I'm almost done with a little Serena's bit Serena's of- delightful. Please keep it's reading. It's so delightful. That's the name of, I think, John and I's next band, Brain, brain diapers. diapers. John yeah. and I. See, you're not middle aged yet, because I would have said mine and John's. Which yeah. was, or hold on, Which let me right. see. Which John and I's. John and I's right. is wrong. Okay. Mine and John. This is me and John. John and mine. This is John and mine. John and my. Who knows? Anyway, research by psychologist Dr. Mara <laughs> Mather showed that older adults tend to focus more. This is so interesting on positive information and less of negative information than their younger counterparts. And I've seen mm. this overall with my parents. Mm, okay. As absolutely. they get older, they get more positive, yep. more delightful to talk to. Everything has a rosy glass. Yep. The amygdala, which is the emotional center of the brain in older adults, responds less to negative stimuli. <sighs> Beginning at around 40, people also show a better memory for positive images than for negative ones. And this brain trend continues until at least age 80. And it's still <sighs> there after that, but it continues to rise. I just <sighs> love this. I, I, I'm so happy to be older now. Oh, just wait. It gets better. This happens most strongly in those who are doing exceptionally well cognitively because a lot of people think, well, they're just their brain's declining and they can't see the full picture mm. of how dark the world can be. Yes. Blah, blah, blah. No, but uh, it's from a positive shift to the brain of older adults that are actually cognitively, their brain is functioning well. Those whose brains are cognitively, you know, functioning at their best, they're the ones that this positive shift is working. So it's not a decline of the brain. It's just a gift. It's a gift mm. that God gives elderly people. We get better at focusing on the good as we age. Mm. I was looking at Pearl, but let me nod to you too. Thank you. A Thank 2008 you. survey of 340,000 Americans aged 18 to 85 found that by age 50, Participants were much less likely to report holding on to stress and anger. You've got a lot to look forward to. Feelings of happiness, pleasure, and of well-being actually increase with age. Another study shows that negative emotions become less frequent, even amping up to this positivity through the age of 60. I just wonder though, Serena, and you know, I always play Deva's ad. Oh, we're coming to that. You know, how, how as women age, the, the rise of anti-anxiety meds increases. I know it's to do with lack of hormones, but how does that correlate? The, lack, the antidepressant rise. Well, I think rise, there are other you, seasons, you know, where use. people go through their lack of hormones, yeah, right? That, and they ride it out. Yeah, the season. And I feel it's like, after that I feel like we're not going to ride it out. We're going to put it back in because then we don't have to pull our big socks up. Yeah. But I think people, as they age, once they get to my, like my dad's not any, on any testosterone no. or anything like that. He's just pulled his big socks up yeah. and he's been come just with the wisdom of years and experience and and the gift that happens with the brain where yeah. he it just actually just he's happier than he was in his prime with his testosterone but we're going to do the both we're okay. going to do the both Good I'm job. enjoying drunk pearl right now this is fun <laughs> now we are half time I promise I have not had alcohol it's just we are half time pearl I'm half time you're half time I'm almost half time but I'm going to be 120 so I'm not quite but you're still you get in there baby dope we are boy. better at regulating our emotions now we are less impulsive uh, yeah. we make better decisions we are more resilient we are wiser for sure 
Dr. Davinjir, a director of geriatric psychiatry and neurology, says older people have less emotional volatility and a better understanding of relationships and have figured out strategies for different situations. Mm-hmm. That's what we call wisdom, she says. Uh, what else gets better? Let's look at this. And this is where the… But can I interject about yes. something that I've noticed with you, Serene? You are definitely more intelligent than you used to be. <laughs> you used to… She I was mean, a you were always a creative, very talented woman. But you… um. I would say that you 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 have a flow these days with your words that I see it like your brain is I don't know it's just super sharp like when you sit down to write it just oozes out of you. Oh, is it cuz she's in pain that she's being No, frustrated? I always think this lately. I'm like how is she so smart? I do think I've seen it as you've aged. Drunk well, Pearl is smart. I might have been a slow a slow, you know, a slow De- what do you call it? Developer. Slow bloomer. Yeah. But that's cool. If you're a slow bloomer and you're halfway and you're only just getting started, let me talk more about it. What else gets better? Marriage and relationships. This mm. is this excites me so much. They are not only better with age and time, like we well, like we know, right? But as older adults, we are better at them. Research shows this. Three times over a 13 year period, researchers watched and coded their interactions of two groups of peoples, couples. One group was composed of couples who were 40 to 50 years old and had been married at least 15 years. The second group included couples who were 60 to 70 years old and had been married at least 35 years. Researchers interestingly showed that negative emotional behavior like defensiveness, belligerence, fear, tension, and whining decreases with age. In these relationships, they saw it it happen with a decrease with age. But the beautiful thing to note was that positive emotional behavior like humor I see it with my parents. Enthusiasm and validation increased with age. This happened in both groups' research and just kept on getting better. This research showed that long-term married couples that stick with it get better and get more beautiful, even if they were pretty rough at the beginning. It's the truth. Oh, it's good stuff. I was reading an article heading the other other day that said, love like you're middle-aged. It's true. Middle-aged people are better at relationships. Another article header, why middle age is the best time to fall in love. Now, I'm not thinking we need to wait till this age to fall in love and begin relationships. I'm thinking this is when we can use our more developed social skills, wisdom, and more positive focused brain to fall in love with our spouse and our children again. And this time, even more completely, our end game is going to be better than our first. We are now honing all our love skills and bringing in the best of our smoochies. We have saved the best smoochies for last, the best conversations, listening skills, the best of ourselves for last. Mm. The wine has aged well. <clears throat> oh, man, that's good. And Serene, here's a goodie. And a shocker, Pearl. We wonder why older people want to retire early. Well, you're about to find out. Your sex gets better oh. as you age. No wonder he g- grabbed it for this one. I bet you <laughs> he did. was reading on and he could tell. Bet you didn't know dream. that your sex got better, ladies. I do know. John? I feel weird saying that to the girls now that I did it. It's like, (laughs) God, I know their husbands. (laughs) According to a study in the Journal of Sexual Medicine, the fact that that exists, by the way. uh, It's very important. Okay, keep going. That's great. Sexual satisfaction can actually get better with age. A study done in Sweden over three decades. Not sure how they did the study, but long found that over time, men's sexual activity increased 47 to 66% while women's activity increased from 12 to 34%. They had more positive outlooks on sexuality than younger groups and had a more fulfilling sexual life. Research is showing that we stand to gain much more than we lose by aging. And what we lose, we can decide to put the brakes on and keep much of it. So, you know, uh, that was that that last um, line. I would have had a break between that first, but you did well. You did well. That was like separate from that, but that was great. Because a lot of people think, okay, my hormones, I have less of a drive, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. We're going to talk about what we can do in our last half game. Pearl's going to really shine here. Am I going to shine like this? But though? I'm just trying to say, it's what they were saying was fulfilling sexual life gets better. Fulfilling, yeah. See, they're Doesn't not trying mean to say you're just as hot people. to trot. Yeah. They're trying to say that actually you're more fulfilled in that way and it is better when it happens. It's yeah. better. And so Pearl's going to talk about how later on, on how, you know, how to we can contend for that. I wish that I didn't have a crook neck when I talked about that. Yeah, Drunk Pearl is going to be great on this topic. <laughs> so did you like that line though, Dan, that you read? That oh, we yeah. stand to gain much more than we lose by aging. And what we lose, we can decide to put the brakes on and keep much of it, right? Yeah. But we stand With to gain, knowledge. even if we lost all the way, but I'm, we're going to show you right here how to put the brakes on some stuff. Yeah. But even if we couldn't, 
we are still standing oh, yeah. there more than yes, we lose. Yes, I fully believe that, Serene. Because when I, before I even t- took my hormones and I was going through menopause and it was stinking tough. Yeah. Uh, losing my hormones. Yeah. Uh, um, it feels tough today too. <laughs> but but just the hot flashes all night, the lack of sleep, mm. all of it going away. But And yet I discovered such joy in my life too mm-hmm. with 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 you know the birth of my first grandchild mm. and and it's just growing the growing wine aging of maturing of our marriage and just looking at the world in a completely new lens of you know passing from motherhood to grandmotherhood and all of that i even without hormones at that time and now it's better i just thought this is the best time of my life mm-hmm. and so yeah Okay, that was my interjection. Drunk oh, I girls love it. Okay, so let's just look at at look just look at some biblical example. Drunk Moses, pearl, right? Drunk pearl, drunk. Moses when he was Sorry. an elderly man, like yeah. old. He said, "My bones are still full of sap." Mm. And we're going to talk about how to keep ourselves full of sap. Joshua, and in Joshua verse fourteen, um, chapter fourteen, verse eleven, it says, "I'm still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I'm just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then." Now, when he wrote that, when he said that, sorry, he was 40 when Moses sent him out and 80 while he was saying it, 80. 80. He says, I'm just as strong now, I'm 80, that when I was 40 for battle, just as strong. So let's get some simple main pointers said here in the locker room for your best play on the last half. Pointer number one, exercise, walk and lift. Lifting lengthens your telomeres and greatly slams on the brakes of aging. Lifting reverses the aging process at the cellular and genetic level. It increases energy, improves insulin resistance, which is the catalyst for inflammation in many diseases, improves your brain. Strength chaining actually reverses aging. Would you like to read this, Darling Heart? <clears throat> yes. Darling Heart. I didn't write it with any grammar. They're on when the I love flow, couch flow. and she's calling you Darling Heart. <laughs> Evidence suggests that mitochondrial dysfunction is associated with scar- sarcopenia. Loss of strength and muscle as we age. That's what sarcopenia is. In every cell in the body, there are hundreds or sometimes thousands of mitochondria. So you wanted me to read this because you misspelled everything here. Oh, yeah. I just was flowing. I was just... Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. The amazing. most active yeah. organs or tissues of the body have the most, like, for example, brain, heart, muscle. The reason we age is the insult. Is the insult? Yeah, or degradation of the mitochondria. Simply... Mitochondria are the organelles in our body responsible for energy production. One thorough study, which is far too long to explain in detail, but I will just quickly brush on one of the highlights. The authors of the study identified 576 genes differently expressed between the groups studied. Of the 576 genes identified, they found 179 associated with age and exercise that showed a remarkable reversal in their expression profile after six months of resistance training. See, that's epigenetics right there. Oh, yeah. And and let's just clarify what epigenetics is. Oh, yeah. Can we finish that study and then you can go? They found that resistant training not only can slow down, but also reverse the aging process at the genetic level. The genetic expression of the elderly individuals became similar to those of the younger group. The researchers also found that the mitochondrial dysfunction closely related to physical inactivity began to reverse after six months of training. Yeah, it's so amazing, right? And so, you know, genetics is what we're born with and what our cells are programmed to do in our life. Epigenetics is when we do things that changes all of that. So if we were born with a predisposition in our genes, you know, perhaps towards arthritis or perhaps towards dementia or perhaps towards cancer, epigenetics and being strength training as being a powerful one at turning epigenetics on changes our genetics. Mm -hmm. And so they used to think, well, you're born with what you're born with. I'm, you know, my genes are just like this, but now that we know um, genetics now only account for about 15% 15 of what happens to us. They used to think it was a hundred. Epigenetics is 85%. -hmm. What we can do changes things. I think this is the power of knowledge and motivation because we're saying this. And if, if like a lot of times I think people think like, Vitamin C helps the immune system, for example. And people will say like, yeah, like sort of, like maybe mm. a fraction of mm-hmm. a percent increase, but nothing to really mm. think about. But in fact, vitamin C, I've taken when a sickness comes on and mm. people around me are dropping and I don't get sick. Yeah. Like I've used vitamin C almost like a, uh, like you would use, uh, what, what are those, uh, 
I don't know. You're, you Fly should. spray? <laughs> you keep saying, uh, but I don't know. No, I know. Um, um, no, uh, it, it's Did bad you? for your gut and they. Probiotic? Antibiotic. Oh, antibiotic. antibiotic. Yeah, 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 not that it works anything like that, but I've, I've taken it almost like medicine. Yeah. And I feel yeah. anecdotally, mm-hmm. yes, mm-hmm. but no. I have experienced that it yeah. staves off. So much scientific research for that. So Dan. what I'm saying is like, we have all of this scientific research. And as I hear this, I'm like, okay, so working out and exercise, strength training, like sort of kind of like staves off things that you're predisposed to mm-hmm. getting like disease, for example, or cancers. And my, in, in my, like, my lazy side of my brain is going, yeah, yeah, but sort of kind of mm-hmm. like, but if it's anything not sort of kind of like it's if not it sort of kind of actually does, does it i mean that was says. just one study and i didn't have time to list all the sources and everything like that but i'm telling you what i just chose one out of like so many studies because i was just writing that right and and it's like why would this not make national headline news why would because news anchors not be absurdly passionate well, i think it's out there and it's easy to find i think there have been many articles written about how exercise truly truly does factually does you know, reverse aging. But the thing is, it takes motivation and it takes energy from a person. They have to get off well, the couch. And I found that it like to do one push up for me is absolutely like it's so hard. It is so hard. But when I start doing it, it I feel amazing like mm. on push up number two. Hey, we're going to talk about more, but we've got to take a break. I did it. It was <laughs> me. Oh, good for you because I completely forgot. I forgot too. <laughs> That was pointer number one, okay? How exercise. many points? Because is this a three. two-part party? No, three points. Oh, I want to get Exer- so good. Exercise, right? E- walk, that's a no-brainer. Lift, that's, that is the true key, mm-hmm. lift. As we age, the laugh half, you know, you walk because you're a human, right? Mm-hmm. But when you go to exercise, you put those weights in your hand. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you're just wasting time. So you're saying when you... When you walk, carry weight? So you're saying no, just whatever. make sure you do just both. Saying She's walking saying is walking because- is fundamental. Everyone should walk. We're, we're, we're not here to say for your exercise, walk. You should be walking because walking is a long, that means the studies show walking lengthens your life. Walking yeah. is an antidepressant. Walking is, walking is anti-anxiety. I mean, it helps your heart. All the things, yes, a thousand times, but everyone knows that. But you can't just walk as walking you Walking is our days off. It's our relaxing. It's our Saturday. It's our rest days from training. But lifting is going to change those that mitochondria on a, a much more stronger yeah. So we're not saying stop walking. No. Walking's fantastic. Point, but we're saying start lifting. Point to two. And this, we're just going to go through in three seconds what we do here at Trim Healthy. Anchor your meals around protein. Eat gentle carbs. Please don't do the keto and the, and the carnivore and stop eating carbs. What's a gentle carb? Gentle carbs are the ones that are that are that God gave. You know, they're Potatoes. not they're not let's the list them. Okay, white. let's list them. Fruit mm-hmm. because it's whole fruit. Yeah, um, beans and legumes. Yeah, lentils. Um, anything, any starchy f- uh, one that grows in the ground, like Tubers. potato, sweet potato. Tubers. Yeah, all of those ones. And um, all the ancient grains. Yeah, ancient grains. Yeah, and 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 some. You know, I mean, like a little corn. honey. Do we consider that little raw honey? Do we consider corn an ancient grain? Yeah, I guess yeah, we do. sure. Especially yeah. if it's GMO. I mean, we're Non-GMO. just gonna get real. We're not getting weird here. We're just getting real. It's real food from the earth. But right? Serene, you so totally skipped over anky meals around protein. That's because we're not taking. A, no, we've take done. A whole we've party. done so much. We have to just move. We're just okay. this is locker room talk. We're, we're just yeah. yelling out and okay. saying, locker rah, room. Rah, "Here's what you're gonna yeah. do. You're gonna get out there and you're gonna do this." Okay, so wait. Okay. I never saw beans as a carb. Yes. Oh, yes. They are. Okay. Is is it too much They're to do beans? More carbs than protein. Is it too much to do beans and rice then? Because no, rice is a carb. Depends upon who you are. It's definitely yeah. not too much for you, Dan. Dan. Stick a meat in there too, Dan. Okay. So, anchor your meals around protein. Why? Because if you're going to lift, you need protein, mm-hmm. and if you're going to age, you need protein. Exactly. But, you know, children can get away with. They actually can build muscle on bread. Mm-hmm. They do. Wow. They build muscle by the insulin-like growth factor. It's anabolic, right? But as we age, we don't we don't grow muscle by that. We grow muscle by the leucine trigger, which is found in protein. Okay, don't fast unless you're fasting for spiritual reasons. This is if you just want to you want to grow and do well in your last race. Eat greens and plants. It's simple. Decorate with healthy fats and all meals for crossovers like people like Dan, or certain meals if you're juggling S and E. But you don't abuse fats. Ditch the sugar. You know all of the above, right? So it's just simple. We, we've done potties and potties. They know all of that stuff. Point number three, 
bioidentical hormones and Pearl's going to give a passionate speech for two minutes. This is locker room speech. Yeah, but look at this person giving the speech. Drunk, That's fine. Pearl, drunk, Pearl, drunk, you Pearl. You can do it, Pearl. Two minute speech on, on bioidentical hormones, why they, 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 they could might be interested in okay, their lifestyle. Okay, true, true. But I don't look the part. But that's, that's all okay. right. Just most people listen rather than look yeah. at this podcast. Still, you know, as we as we age, we decline. Okay, our hormones decline. So you could say someone might say, um, "Well, is there a reason? Maybe there's a reason God made our hormones decline. When we mess with it, when we try to put it back, you know, bad things can happen." But I would say <laughs> we're here to contend. Things happen, and we're supposed to get knowledge and then do things to make them stop happening, like Serene said before. Okay, our eyesight goes as we age. So should we say, well, that's just the way it's supposed to be. I'm going to stop driving now. God I'm had gonna, a reason why I'm my gonna eyes I'm going to stop reading. God knows best, you know. Or do we, I mean, get proactive, get our glasses or get our contacts or get our laser surgery or whatever, and we do, we do something about it. And it's the same with our vitamin D levels. They decline. It's up. Oh, okay, thanks. I, I cannot be the person talking about You're this. You're doing great. That's why you should be the person to talk about it. Yeah. I know, no, the contrast is great. <laughs> the fact that you're telling us how to age wonderfully and you're and basically like crippled. Crippled. No, crippled. it's because she felt so me. great. She stretched so Look crazily. Look at me. Yesterday, <laughs> I... Oh, you this should have seen me. She's doing the best workout in the world. Oh, my goodness. So, you know, so, okay. So, what we go through, as our hormones decline, we lose our brain function. Sadly, Serene. I know that our brain works in different ways, but as our hormones decline, like the recall Why, ability goes away. Your eyes for like five minutes. Because she was still in agony. Oh, my god! She's breathing through the control. Bro, go ah, home. Heart. Heart protection, all of that, it dwindles. But as we put them back, we stop that decline. So, aging fantastically to me, is putting all that back in wisely, you know, not doing it in in kind of unlearned ways that many people are putting hormones back in right now, but doing it very wisely um, without extremes. It's, it's a, I believe it's the way of the future. I believe that women have been very unattended with this. Mm -hmm. And we've just been told, well, that's what happens, you know, get on an antidepressant because they're going through, when you lose your estrogen, it's as almost as if your very essence is, sque essence is squeezed out of you. I mean, I felt that way. And then, you know, as I said, I came around that corner and I, and I just decided to grab hold of life in my new season. But man, it's hard to go through. And, that and not, not every woman finds it as hard, but some of us do. And along with it, you know, for women especially goes, goes the libido, goes the actual section, f sexual function. I mean, things dry up, people. They dry up. And, um, there doesn't, that does not have to happen. Mm -hmm. In fact, we can be our best and, and, um, most ripest selves. <laughs> I mean, we're I was, talking about I was dry to on dry. the edge of my seat waiting Wait for your choice. For the word. I had another word and I decided I not to use word. it. Luscious? Um, no, it was worse. So I just went with ripe. <laughs> I'm just I know, saying. I know, I know the word you were going to say. <laughs> Good we all know the word. Orange. Okay, yeah. So anyway, juicy. Yeah, we could be our juicier selves. I'll just go there. All I'm saying Fine. is, um, and we can be, we can gain more muscle than. I mean, I look, I look kind of decrepit today, but I've gained muscle yes. since I put back my hormones. Um, so all I'm saying that was big, my big rah rah. So I love it. It's it. fantastic. It's brilliant, and and it's not contradicting what we said before. It's just because, contradicting no, this. No, I'm just saying it was, because it was comical because God has given this positive outlook to the brain, and things things do improve in the brain. Yes, but there are some things that get lost. But we're saying we don't even have to lose those with bioidentical hormones. No, we and don't. we're saying in that season that is hard, that crux that a lot of people mm. have to kind of turn the corner around before yeah. they get a new perspective. You don't even have to do that, right? And why? Because it's the same reason why you're not going to not wear glasses when your eyes run out. Yeah. Because that's silly because God wants you to read books yeah, and he wants you silly. to drive. It's just silly. Yes. Okay. And God wants you to have sex when you're 83 yeah. if you're still married. Okay. Pointer four, last but not least, practice peace. Oh, yeah. I think there's only truly one source, <sighs> right? Love deeply, shove fear, tap into joy, be creative, flush every negative thought down the loo. And this is my final little locker room passionate part now go out and rock your last radio make it an epic ride 
Pull, put all your passion and zeal into it. It is a privilege to walk on this earth as one blessed with many years. You may have messed up a bit or a lot on your first half, but now you are going to make the most of the half where the winners make the win. No matter how big your comeback, and, then if, and if it is from total flop to flippin' fantastic, then your story will inspire others around you that you could have easily, others around you that could have easily thrown in the towel if not for your example. Get out there and play well. It's not only your future that waits to be won. And that's yeah. so true, right? People are watching our lives. Yes, and by are. example, you know, some people when they have it all together, that's not really an ex- it's not really an example for some. They need to well, see. Well, it's, it's not the mo- It's not what movies are made of, Serene. No. Movies are made, anything that we want to watch is the turnaround. Mm-hmm. The one that was, you know, the one that struggled in the beginning and then epically made Even it for in your the marriage, end. right? If yes. you're a halfway point, and your marriage feels a little bit dry. Yeah, oh, you've got a great last half for that story. Yeah, I love it, it, your for points. your health for all oh. things. I love everything about it. I'm locker room cheerleaded up. Keep it juicy, friends. Tune in next time.